it's never easy, is it? Losing a game of football. It doesn't matter who you're playing against. It's never really easy to take. Um, I, I mean, I've got to say, I thought Manchester City were excellent, but I've got to say, I thought West Ham were really good too. I was actually really proud of the performance. I do not understand some of the accounts that um, that are negative and criticised. I, I don't really understand it. I, I, I mean, look, I'm not saying you know it was perfect. It certainly wasn't perfect, but I don't really understand what some fans expect. I mean, I thought West Ham actually handled themselves very well. I thought we were in it for the vast majority. Uh, we'll go through the game, the sort of key points in a minute, but I thought there were a couple of moments in that game that really swung it in City's favour. And I actually thought that, it, yeah, David Moyes said it, didn't he? Sort of small margins. And I actually think that's the perfect way of describing it because it really was like that. I think it really could have gone our way. I think on another day, we could have won that game. Um, but look, it's football and, and, you know, Man City sort of proved, how, you know, why they are where they are, the treble winners, you know, they're just so ruthless and just so much quality. And, um, but no, I, I've got to say, I walked away from that. Yes, of course, disappointed with the, with the scoreline, but um, I actually felt really proud, really proud of West Ham. I thought we did well. And um, yeah, fair enough. Look, before um, we go into this though, I just want to say that there's a, a fair chunk of you that are going to watch this that aren't subscribers. Now, if you subscribe, you enter our competition to win a free top, West Ham top, home away or third. We give away one a month uh, for the whole season. It's free to do so. Just click subscribe. And also, of course, it, um, you follow us on our journey and it's really appreciated. So please do that. Um, look, I was going to do a separate video, actually, talking about the game. But we've had some recent news um, regarding Edson Alvarez. So I thought I'd do a little bit of a combined video regarding that. So, um, I mean, I want to talk. Let's talk about the game. Uh, first. So, as expected, City kind of dominated the early stages of the match, um, very much as we expected West Ham would be, you know, sitting back, dealing with them um, in terms of their possession and, and then their probing at the goal and things like that. And it was one of those where you kind of felt that once we settled, we'd be OK and we'd start sort of um, getting our sort of putting our mark on the game a little bit, which I actually thought that happened. But the first 10, 15 minutes was pretty much all City. Um, I, I thought we handled it pretty well. There was one sort of occasion where there was a bit of a goal line scramble. I think they had about sort of three hits on goal. Great saves, Mariola. Apart from that, they didn't really threaten us too much. I thought I felt that we handled it pretty well, actually, and we, we looked good. Um, but once we got into the game, once West Ham started um, getting our, you know, a bit of a feel for it, I thought we looked really good. I thought Lucas Paqueta, he was really pulling the strings, looking excellent. I, I was very impressed with him. Uh, Ward Prowse was very good as well. But I just, I, overall, I thought the performance was decent. And you could see we were starting to cause some problems because as, as good as City are, I mean, let's it's, it's, it's make no mistake about it, Man City are the best team in the world. I, I, I think that's fair to say, in my opinion anyway. I'm sure people might have different views on that, but I really think they are the best team. Um, so... But even with, with that being said, I think they are a little bit vulnerable at the back at times. And I, I thought we were causing them a few problems when we were going, when we were breaking forward. And you could kind of sense there was a chance that we could nick a goal. Um, and then we did, didn't we? I mean, it was 10 minutes, around about 10 minutes before half time. Uh, we went one up and it was deserved. I thought at this period of the game, we were just looking very dominant. They looked a little bit rattled, uh, City. Uh, but the goal was fantastic and really, really good play um, from Vladimir Soufal. Let's be honest, had quite a rough game, really. Um, Doku was causing him no end of issues. Um, or Doku, sorry. Um, because no end of issues on the on the, on the the left-hand side. Well, obviously, he's all right. But he really caused him issues. But I thought he played really well, Soufal. And with that goal... Um, amazing, really. The way he brought it forward and, and just pinged it over uh, to War Prowse, who was just lurking with a lovely sort of diving header, uh, very low header um, into the bottom corner. I mean, my word, we we're, were absolutely mental in the stadium. And it was just great, wasn't it? A great moment. And that, I, I actually genuinely had that belief then. I thought, we can go, we're going to go and win this game. We're really good because City were against the ropes then. Make no mistake, between that point and half time, City were wanting the break. They were needing it. West Ham were looking very dangerous. And I think that second goal really would have uh, really could not, I would never say have killed the game because you can't say that against Man City, but it would have made a very, very different story, I think. But um, no, I thought West Ham played really well um, at that point. I was very pleased. I think most of us were, weren't we? We went to half time thinking, well, one up here, we're arguably, I wouldn't necessarily say we're the better side, but you could say we were really causing them a lot of problems. So, no, I was I, overall, I was very, very pleased. And it was that moment at, at the second, you know, when he went into the break and then going into the second half. And I actually said this, that as long as we just don't concede in the first 10 minutes, we can get over that first 10 minutes of the second half and keep it as it is, this score, or obviously add another, another goal, we could really go on and win this game. So to concede, in, I think it was like 40 seconds, wasn't it, into the second half, um, was so frustrating. Um, good goal from City, of course, but... 
we were just napping and just not quite at it. And it was so frustrating because then you're back to square one and it did feel at that point that was probably not the turning point. I'm going to go into what I thought the turning point was, but that was a real setback for us because we just, that was the worst time to be conceding the goal. Um, and then uh, I actually thought there was this was the key moment of the game. There was two key moments. The main key moment for me was uh, Zuma's header, uh, which was saved by Edison uh, from a corner. So it came in from James Will Prowse, whips it in, you know, and Zuma's um, rose above everybody else and fired this header into the bottom uh, bottom left hand side of the goal. And what a save from Edison! Um, unbelievable. It hasn't actually been spoke about a lot, really, in my opinion. I'm surprised it hasn't in terms of you know doing its rounds in the media and stuff. Because I thought it was an amazing save, and I actually think that was the turning point. That was the moment because had that gone in, let's, let's be honest, on any other day that would have gone in. You know, it, it was an amazing save. I, I genuinely believe that would have been a huge moment and probably would have lead, led us to go in and win the game. I really do because we were. I wouldn't say we were on top. But we were playing very well. The crowd were buzzing, and you just got that. It would it would have been the perfect time to score. Um, and then the second part of the the game for me, which I felt that really swung it in City's favours, was um, Alvarez and Edson Alvarez going off injured, uh, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, so he goes down. I think it was on the I think around about sixty eight minutes, something like that. I can't quite quite, quite remember. Around that sort of time, around about seventy minutes, he came off, and yeah, it was about, and. It, that was the killer moment for me because he's even though he's only just started for West Ham, he's very instrumental in terms of keeping our shape and and he's just solid, isn't he? Such a such an important player. And then uh, Moyes, it was a really strange moment because you had um, Kudus and Ben Ramo coming on, waiting to come on the pitch, and you could see Moyes. He kind of they were standing there for about ten minutes waiting to come on the pitch because Moyes was reluctant to make the change because of the dominance at the time. We were having corners and free kicks. And I think he wanted to keep the sort of players on the pitch that were, that were on. And then there was a lot was going to be a change. It looked as if Suchet was going to come off and uh, Antonio. And then because Alvarez has then gone into a, a lay down on the floor, he had to then change his mind. And then he's then decided to take Antonio off instead of Suchek. Uh, for Kudus, and it was all a bit of a shift around. I couldn't really work out what was happening. And obviously, Alvarez come off uh, sort of limp or being carried off effectively. Um, he looked looking quite you know in bad shape, and which is obviously a huge blow at the time. And really, it was for me that was the moment where we lost our shape, we lost our sort of swagger a little bit. There was just something missing, um, from the, our play, and it just felt that you could sense that. City were probably now going to take advantage of the situation, which they did. Um, Silver and Haaland uh, got the other goals. I'm not going to, I haven't got too many complaints. As I say, I know some fans are aware of people complaining that it was a bit soft and arguably a little bit, especially the second, maybe you could argue it was a bit soft. But ultimately, you know, let's not take nothing away from the fact that City, City's got a very quality. I mean, I've, I, it was a, they ooze it, don't they, City? They really do ooze that, um, that ability uh, on the ball and and they just yeah very very difficult to handle and they're just like sort of team when, you, when they just get a sniff they're in and you just they, they're so ruthless and full credit to them really I've got to be honest I mean I know it's, it was painful of course never nice nice to lose a game and as I say I actually generally think if that zoom ahead had gone in I think we'd have gone and won the game I really do I, I strongly believe that um, at very least been a draw I don't think City would have won it at all I just think that, that would have carried us forward but it didn't happen. It's one of them days, but I, I don't have any shame at all. I don't walk away annoyed, disappointed, angry. It's just one of those things, isn't it? I, I'm not disappointed with the performance. I'm disappointed with the result because it's a loss. You know, you're never going to be thrilled. But I'm very proud of the performance, and I thought we did very well. And it was the fine margins. Um, I'll be honest. I think the scoreline three-one really flattered Man City. I don't think it was a three-one uh, game at all. I think for the vast majority, I think you go as far as saying that until they got their second goal, which was that was 76 minutes, I believe. Um, that was the silver goal that I felt that no, sorry, the, that was the Harlem goal, wasn't it? Is it right? Yeah, yeah. And I felt that that was the no, ha, yeah, sorry, the Harlem goal. I did feel that that was the time when it, it swung in their favour, and and, they were, and we were probably the second best team at that point. But I think up to that second goal, we, I think we were in it. I really do. I think West Ham were firmly in that game and playing very well. But look, these things happen. It, it, it's it's one of those things you're going to take on the chin. You're playing against the best team in the world. I'm certainly not going to get too despondent about it. Um, but now, look, on to Edson Alvarez. This is what I want to mainly talk about. Um, and it's good news. Very, very good news. So 
we, we knew that uh, because of the international break that the player was going to be flying in late uh, from America. So I, I don't think he flew. But he basically only had one training session, which was the Friday. He came in late on the Thursday, which was a shame. So basically he was exhausted. Um, and that is what it's been proven to be, apparently. So that he's now... He apparently told the press when he came out about his injury. He was asked when he was leaving the ground about um, how he, how he was, and he apparently said that no, it was just down to fatigue. And it, if you actually watch, I was, it, where he went off was right near where I sit actually, and you can see he was effectively being treated for cramp. So although he, he, he looked very uncomfortable, and if you could, when he came off the pitch, he effectively was not being carried, but he was being helped and held up a little bit walking off, which suggested an injury. So this is quite a bad injury. And David Moyes even used the word injury. Um, so. Although it needs to be 100% confirmed exactly how he is, it appears that he was actually down to fatigue, cramp, and he just needed to come off the pitch, um, which is such a shame because I do think that was a, another moment that swung it in their favour. It, it really did. And and I think against these side City, they, they are like, they are those margins, aren't they? Like sl any, any slight advantage their way, just a little bit, you can, can really swing it. And I think that's what happened. Um, as I said, the Zuma header and that moment for me, they were the two key moments of where it went their way. Um, and as I said, I, no, full credit to City, they're a wonderful team. And, you know, amazing, amazing to watch really, you know, with the ball and they're just incredibly talented. But I do look at it and think on another day, we'd have won that. I really do believe that we would have done um, but look, we're back to uh, European football this week, which I've got to be honest, I can't wait. I'm absolutely buzzing uh, to be back at the Europa League. And it's, it's served us well, uh, European football. Europa League uh, a couple of seasons ago, Europa Conference last season, we're now back in Europa again. It does serve us West Ham well for some reason, but these games really suit us, suit our club. And it's almost like I like it because it gives us that opportunity to get back to winning ways, to get back feeling good again, back, back to London stadiums, get a result. Um, is it back at to Polo we're playing uh, the, on on Thursday? Um, arguably the probably the easiest team in our group at home. Perfect, really. Let, let, let's get a decent result. Hope we do because that's exactly what we need, especially ahead of Liverpool. Going to be a challenge. That is, we we know it's a horrible place to go, um, and especially off the back of a defeat. We don't want a, another defeat, really. We want to go in there with brimming confidence, and I, and I think that that this Thursday game will help. So, yes, disappointed, but look, Thursday football's back onwards and upwards. Thank <laughs> you.